Hey guys, welcome to the fourth video in the advanced C sharp track. And up until now, we've really been talking about inheritance. And we're going to continue that conversation, but we're going to focus on how constructors are used when you're using inheritance. Now, I mentioned before that inheritance follows this principle of an is a relationship. And that's really important to understand because in our examples, student and employee are both inheriting or deriving from person, so they technically are person or people, right? So a student is a person, an employee is a person. That's really important because what's happening behind the scenes is that when a student is created, like we're doing here, behind the scenes, memory is actually being allocated for a person. You can essentially think of when I say student S equals new student, behind the scenes, it's also saying person P equals new person. That's how you can kind of conceptualize it. That's what's happening behind the scenes. All right, so now this is where it gets a little bit confusing because imagine a situation where person has a constructor. How is the system going to know how to create a person object if it requires a constructor? Now, let me give you an example. If we think about this, a person probably has a name, right? All people have names. So it may be you know, common in the person class to make the constructor accept a string for the name. So for example, if I create a, a constructor and I say string name like this, this is probably pretty common. And then maybe I'll just say, you know, this dot name equals name. I'll just do a basic assignment. But now this is saying that you can't, you can't create a person object unless you supply a name. Now, if I go ahead and build this, notice what happened. It crashed. And it says there is no argument given that corresponds to the required formal parameter for the person. So it's saying, oh, wait a second, even though I'm creating a student and employee, they are people and a person requires a name and you're not giving me one. So I have a problem. OK, so how can we fix this? And it's actually very simple. All we have to do is we have to say when a student or an employee or anything that derives from person, when that is created, just satisfy the base class constructor. So for example, let's take student. As you can see, students give me an error. What I'm going to say is, I'm going to say, when a student is created, satisfy the parent's constructor. So to do that, I'm going to create a constructor for the student. And I'm going to use a special keyword, which we're actually going to come back and focus on this a little bit more in a future video. But we're going to use a keyword called base. So the syntax is pretty simple. Just go under the constructor, create a colon, and then say base. That means I want to call my base class constructor. and then. In parentheses, I just satisfy the constructor. As you can see here, it says my person requires a name, so I have to supply one here. So I could say test, right? Now, this works fine. As you can see, it fixed there. Let me go ahead and fix my person also, sorry, my employee. So I'll make a employee constructor, right? So my errors go away. I'm now completely fine. I'm satisfying my base class constructor. Well, OK, the next problem is, that's great, but the person's name will always be test. Now, I mean, in our code, we do overwrite that with these values, but this is kind of inefficient. What we really want is, well, since all people require a name and student and employee are also people, let's make that class, student and employee, have a constructor that takes a name as well. So it's, it's pretty simple. In my student, I'll say string name. And I'll just take whatever name the student gets, and I'll just forward that to my base class. And the same thing with my employee. OK. So now this does the same exact thing, except that in my person, or sorry, in my program, I'll now put in the name in here. And by doing that, I can also remove these lines. So just kind of to sum it up, since a student and an employee is a person, I need to satisfy that base class. So in the student constructor, I pass in the string. It comes here. It says, oh, OK, 
we're not doing anything with that name. Let's just pass it to our base class to satisfy its base class constructor. It goes to person, it sees that name, and then it updates the name here. And because student and employee all derive from person, they can access this property. Okay, so now, I mean, this is just a basic example. You could really change this any way you want. You could maybe make name read only at, at this point because you're setting it through the constructor. That's up to you. But the basic idea of how the constructors works um, is really what I wanted to emphasize in this video.